Yes, that time of a Thursday when we produce the goods and you feel a little bit smarter by the end in 10 minutes' time. People are still talking about the fortnight ago and the Masters Meaningful Metrics. They came up with Cam Smith, which was looking so beautiful until the camera zoomed right in as he stood on the 12th tee in the final round of Augusta, having just birdied 11, all the momentum with him, but the weight of expectation of Meaningful Metrics got to him and he just put it in Ray's Creek. And that was that. But Meaningful Metrics this week is going to come up with the goods. It is in partnership with Whoop, the personalized digital fitness and health coach that helps you unlock your inner potential. See whoop.com for more. And this week, we are talking snooker with Shane Hannon. Good evening, Shane. Good evening, Nathan. How are things? Wow. Wow. <laughs> I know Fresh John Douglas that was hot, didn't he? So I had, I had, to, I had to go, for, for all the viewers out there, I've gone full shebang and dressed like a snooker player and brought my cue as well. So ready to go. You look like you're just heading off on your debs. <laughs> I feel, I actually feel underdressed because I was uh, scavenging around there the house looking for a, a dicky bow. A bow tie, I think, would have topped it all off. But I have my, uh, my Ronnie O'Sullivan signed snooker ball. Your viewers will see that as well and my, my rest as well. So I've, got, I've come with, with a bit of kit. Just the, the dicky bow is missing, Nathan. And for, uh, sorry to, your, to all your listeners and viewers. What's the market like for a uh, signed Ronnie O'Sullivan snooker ball? Uh, reasonable market. You probably like he, he does so many of the signings that uh, it probably uh, reduces the price a little bit. But pro- you'd probably get a hundred quid for it, maybe hundred quid, eighty, hundred quid. You wouldn't. Not bad. A hundred quid. eBay. Check out eBay. I'm telling you. And this one, he's uh, he's actually. I got this signed to draw it. You might not be able to see it. He wrote Ronnie O'Sullivan one four seven. So <sighs> that little edition of the one four seven. Who knows? Might take it to one twenty, Nathan. I think it's, we should uh, do a meaningful big metrics there. on the most valuable pieces of memorabilia. A hundred quid for a signed snooker ball by Ronnie O'Sullivan. And you're saying he's signing loads of them. Uh, loads of them. Where did you he's get the snooker shop, ball? Actually. Where did you get the snooker ball to get him to sign it? Like, do oh, you go on the bit? Ryanair flight to the Crucible with 15 snooker balls in your back pocket? No, they actually they actually sell them over at the Crucible already signed by people. But that one in particular was at a, an exhibition in Drogheda. He was playing Jimmy White, interviewed the two lads beforehand, and... Uh, Got uh, got each of them to sign a little uh, snooker ball for me. I actually got Jimmy White to sign the pink ball. In retrospect, I probably should have got Jimmy White to sign the white. But uh, listen, we live and we learn. Well, uh, for real value, and we're going off on a massive tangent here, should you not have got Ronnie and Jimmy to sign the same ball? I know. This is the thing, though. You could only display it one way. Like, they could have signed the other side. I actually got them uh, both to sign a snooker cue. So I have Ronnie, Ronnie, Jimmy White, and John Virgo sign a queue. Not this See, one. These this lads were I... sick of the sight of you by the end of uh, this interview you were doing. Yeah, we just wrap up there, lads. Three minutes done. Uh, I've got 18 things I want you to sign. <laughs> that, that was the most important part. Forget the interview. It's, it's all about the sign stuff. You, th- you think I could play snooker with all this stuff I've, uh, I've gathered, but uh, sadly, no. It's, uh, it's all just to watch. I've got some bad news for you, Shane. Uh, Mick McCarthy, our producer, has just been to eBay. Signed. Uh-oh. Ronnie O'Sullivan, sorry, Keane has actually just been on eBay, has just been on and checked the value of your signed Ronnie O'Sullivan snooker ball, 24 euro. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it, Nathan. And I'll tell you why. These autographs are all about provenance. So anyone can forge one. Do they have a photograph of Ronnie holding the ball? That's that's the proof. That's the extra provenance that brings up the signature. So I like I can show this the, myself and Ronnie shaking hands, him holding this ball, and uh, that's the proof. So... Listen, a Nathan Murphy signature would go for 24 quid on eBay. I imagine at least one of my family members would purchase it for once. <laughs> so we're going to talk snooker because we are on the eve of the World Snooker Championship. And we have 25 years. Is this 25 years? Quarter of a century since Ken Doherty? It is. Yeah, this, this May. 25 years. Hard to believe, Wowzers. isn't it? We should do something on that really now that I think about it. Yeah. Book Ken Hardy in for that date. Everyone else will have already booked him in, but just give him a shout. He'll always come on. Uh, so we're <laughs> going to do the World Snooker Championship and we're going to do again a look back through the statistical history and what gets and what goes into a World Snooker Champion. So where do you want to start? What are the meaningful metrics behind a World Snooker Champion? Mm. Well, you've kind of put the pressure on, Nathan. I watched your, uh, your Masters one and look, to be fair, Cam Smith at a tied third wasn't a bad finish. Luckily... I guess the field, as you mentioned, for the Masters, probably the easiest tournament to predict from a golf sense, small field. You could argue then that in the World Snooker Championship, there's only 32 players, and it should be easy. 
but no, it's not. It's very, very difficult to predict who's going to win the World Snooker Championship. Um, like They've done a bit of work for me. There were 128 players at the start of uh, the last uh, week or two at qualifying in Sheffield. And uh, just today, the draw for the final 32, the actual World Snooker Championship proper, which gets underway on Saturday, has been made. So we know the final 32. My job, Nathan, is to get it down to one, which um, is not going to be easy. But I will try my best. So... I think I'm, I'm going to go follow a, a similar start to, to how you did with the Masters and, and, and look at the amateurs slash qualifiers. So uh, these are the people you can all but rule out straight away. Now, amateurs don't win the Masters. You, you talked about Fuzzy Zeller in 79 winning the golf, but um, in, in the snooker, we can talk about qualifiers in this sense. So Sean Murphy, for example, got to the final last year, uh, was an amateur when he won it for the only time in 2005. That was the, the first time a, a qualifier had won it. Uh, since Terry Griffiths in 1979, the great Welshman. So if we're picking qualifiers and guys who've come in the back door, I guess, uh, I'm just going to rule some of them out straight away here, Nathan. So Michael White, he's one of them. He's come through qualifying. He knocked out the Northern Irishman, Jordan Brown, 10-8 in qualifying yesterday. He, he's become only the second amateur to qualify for the Crucible. So he's the only amateur in the field this year. He's gone straight away in my book. Jackson Page, Chris Wakelin, Liam Highfield, no, most of your listeners I won't have heard those names. They're also qualifiers. They take on Barry Hawkins, Yan Bing Tao, and Anthony McGill, all very difficult uh, uh, first-round ties. As I said, that draw was made today. So those four are out. Michael White, Jackson Page, Chris Wakelin, and Liam Highfield. Straight off the bat. Um, that's not all the qualifiers. So the first round, Nathan, in, in the snooker, is the 16 guys who've come through qualifying against the 16 uh, ranked or top 16 mm. players in the world. So you're getting rid of uh, all 16 of them? <laughs> not just yet. Not just yet. Like... I, I've wrestled with this, Nathan, for the last 24 hours when I knew I was doing this. And, and I feel bad because the qualifiers, often some of them can get quite deep in, in the tournament, but rarely make it past the quarterfinals. Um, and that's where my next metric comes in, the crowd and the crucible theatre itself. Now, this is a, a hallowed place. I know you golf fans will, will place a lot of emphasis on, on Augusta. A sporting and, uh, cathedral. It is a sporting cathedral, both Augusta National and the Crucible Theatre. Um, and I've been there at the Crucible, and it's... It's daunting. It's not a massive audience. It's about a thousand people. You see the stars twitting on the roof in there as well. It's Your just man in the, the Coventry jersey in the front row. <laughs> and that's been bad now. You can't even wear football jerseys in the crowd anymore, what? which is, I know, disgraceful. Um, but I did, see, I did see and meet that guy at the at the Crucible a couple of years ago. It's a pity you can't wear the jersey. So I would have worn my Monaghan jersey if I'd known. Um, but if, if we look at the, the crowd and the impact of playing in front of the Crucible for the first time, so Jackson Page, I've already ruled him out. It's his, it's, it's his Crucible debut. That is adding a lot of pressure. Like, who plays well in front of a crowd? Any of them, really? It's impossible to narrow it down in that sense. If you're against Ronnie, it's really sink or swim in front of that crowd. Uh, Hossein Vafei, he's an Iranian player. First time at the Crucible for him. I just think he's drawn a bit, a bit too much attention on himself, Nathan, into this uh, tournament. Yesterday, he was quoted. He was asked about Ronnie O'Sullivan, and he said Ronnie should just retire. He's a bit disrespectful at times, and that he should uh, step aside and leave it to the younger Oof. guys to come through. If you're gonna, this is like a golfer calling out Tiger Woods during his first or before his first ever time at the Masters. You're just putting unnecessary pressure on yourself. I don't. Why would you do that? Um, so calling out Ronnie O'Sullivan, Hossein Vafey, you're gone. I'm sorry, mate. Um, Jamie Clark is another one there. Great Welsh player, but he gets a bit too emotional. Really fist pumping. You know when he, when he wins a big frame, he's quite aggressive in that sense, but a really good player. Like he knocked out Gary Wilson and Graham Dodd in qualifying, so he's a top top talent. Uh, but I just, as I said, got he gets too emotional. He got to the second round a couple of years ago in 2020 at the Crucible. That was in front of no crowd. That just backs up my point. Uh, I think in front of a crowd at the Crucible, it's going to be quite difficult for him. Five of these qualifiers, in fact, of the 32 Nathan are Welsh. You've got Michael White, uh, Jamie Jones, Matthew Stevens, Jackson Page, Jimmy Clark, and of course Mark Williams, uh, the most Welsh players uh, in the Crucible since 1990. So will we have a Welsh winner? We'll see. I think that might be the most the boring stat that we've ever had on this show. <laughs> I know. I, Who can I, remember I, the glory days of Welsh snooker back in 1990? Thank uh, God they're back. Terry Griffiths and all and all the lads. And yeah, he, Terry Griffiths, uh, to be fair, is probably the most boring. Shane, you're looking player. good. You're looking yeah, good. But look if we're going to be going through these lads one by one, <laughs> come on. Let's start know, getting, getting to that. it. Well, Nathan, I, I, look, you went, you went through the golfers, not quite one by one, but uh, close enough. Um, world rankings that's another one you spoke about Scotty Scheffler effect went on to win it world number one I'm going to rule out some of these guys Matthew Stevens, for example world number 55 he's gone 
like Ronnie O'Sullivan is top of the world rankings now after the, the third championship at Clan Dudno. I'll come back to him later. Side of the draw is another metric, Nathan. Um, so Jack the draw has been made. Great. You don't want to be on yeah. what side? Well, you, you want to be avoiding the side that Ronnie and Neil Robertson are both on. This is like a... It's like Monaghan, Donegal and Tyrone maybe all being on one side of Ulster. Thankfully, that's not the case this this year. But uh, you you want all the big guns avoiding each other uh, on t- as far as you can. Jack Lazowski, like he's reached six ranking finals, but he's been runner-up each of those times. He's never won a ranking event. And he's on the same side of the draw as, as Neil Robertson and would, would meet him in a second round. So he's gone. And form is another one. You mentioned Ken Doherty, Nathan. Like coming into the 1997 World Snooker Championship, Ken Doherty was in atrocious form. And I cannot emphasize that enough. He was playing terribly. Um, and yet, that all went out the window. And something happened at the Crucible in Sheffield over those uh, two and a half, three weeks. That's the opposite just of a out meaningful out of metric. It is. It, 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 form is a massive metric. And like you spoke about it for the, for the Masters as well. I think John Duggan spoke about it for the, the entry Grand National. Um, it's probably important, quite important in horse racing as well, to be fair. But in snooker, there has to be emphasis put on it. I would put Ken Doherty's win in 87 being in terrible form as a as a massive outlier. So, so who's in the best form right now? Th- the best form is Neil Robertson, without a shadow of a doubt. And if you look at the big names, perhaps someone who you'd expect to be in better form at this point would be Judd Trump. So sorry to all the Judd Trump fans out there, but he's he's uh, being ruled out. Jesus, from, you're uh, getting from one angry text. Yeah, 53106 for all you Judd Trump fans. Scott Donaldson is gone. Jamie Jones is gone. And David Gilbert is gone. Um, all came through the qualifying. All played quite well. But I just think when it comes to the big to, to the big thing uh, and to the Crucible uh, itself, and David Gilbert got to the semifinals a few years ago, but I watched his qualifier yesterday, Nathan, and this is important. He might have beaten Anthony Hamilton 10-3, but he looked absolutely wrecked. So for the players coming through the qualifying rounds, you go straight into the Crucible. It's only after finishing yesterday, and they're straight into playing on Saturday or Sunday. Um, so he's gone. You know you like have I a full-time job and you know aren't in first year of arts in college as I once was uh, when you're sitting down of a Wednesday afternoon watching a World Snooker Championship qualifier involving David Gilbert. <laughs> uh, yeah, world, like world, <laughs> when you put it like that, um, yeah, I'm starting to question my own choices, but... Like the the world snooker, world snooker had it up on their their YouTube page, so it's one of those you know background things. Like you know, when we're, back in the days where we were in the office, Nathan, for off the ball, you'd have some some little bit of sport on on the TV during the day, and it's a bit like it's a bit like daytime television. Like Jeremy Kyle and all that crap is is a bit brutal, but it's the same for daytime sport. It tends to be a bit crap, but at least the last couple of days I've had the benefit of of throwing on the the world snooker YouTube page. Yeah, maybe I had a little bit too much time on my hands, but uh, there you go. What about Another nationality? Big name, it's what it's what Nathan. What about nationality? How important is that? <laughs> That's massive. That's massive. Um, huge. Only player outside the UK, um, and Ireland that has won it is Neil Robertson in 2010. So, on that basis, I'm ruling out the Chinese players. I said at the start of the year, I think a Chinese person, a player, might get close to the World Snooker Championship this year. Uh, if it's going to be anyone, it's going to be Zhao Jintong, the UK champion. But I'm going to rule him out. Yan Bing Tao, Liu Hao Shan, the um, uh, Belgian player Luca Brussel, who's been in decent form as well, it has to be said this year, he's gone. And the two Thai players, Tep Chaya on New, great, build, great uh, break builder, but uh, loses the head a bit when it gets close to the winning line. He's gone. And Nopon Sang Kam, the other Thai player, they are all gone. Might sound harsh, Nathan, but. Uh, Very harsh, I would matter. argue. Very harsh. But listen, <laughs> if that's what the meaningful metrics say. That's fair enough. Uh, I like the next one being from Mayo because this is obviously a real thing. Uh, the Crucible Curse. This, yeah, the Crucible Curse. And this is a real thing. Um, now, it doesn't date back to, to 1951 uh, and, and the Mayo lads, but uh, it's still it's still an important metric. Not so important maybe this year, um, but the, the Crucible Curse says that of the 18 players to have won their first ever world title at the Crucible, six lost in their first match as defending champion. Uh, and then, uh, most recently, Judd Trump. He won his first world title a couple of years ago. He fell at the quarterfinal stage. No player who has won the world title for the first time, has gone on to defend it the following year. So even Ken Doherty actually got very close. 97, he wins for the first time. 98, he gets all the way to the final before John Higgins beats him in that decider. Um, this year, the defending champion is Mark Selby. It's, it was his third time winning last year. So the Crucible Curse, although a real thing, Nathan, doesn't come into the metrics this year, but is worth a, a mention, it has to be said. Uh, what about form then at the Crucible? I guess, the, as you say, the crowd, the intensity, the length... 
of the tournament, the length of the frames and the length of the matches, that bit of experience must be absolutely crucial. 100%. And uh, one of the other big names I'm going to rule out in this in this section is John Higgins. And and some people might say oh, he just got to the third championship final. He, he lost to uh, Daniil Robertson in the final. And yes, that was the most recent tournament. And you could say, OK, he got all the way to the final. But, and I will say this with an asterisk, he, he lost in such a, a, a terrible way from his perspective. £150,000 on the line. Uh, nine four ahead against Neil Robertson in the final in a race to ten frames, and Robertson wins the next the, the final six frames of the match to win ten nine, and Higgins had chances. He was gutted after that match. Like if you watch his post match interview, uh, he, he was almost questioning himself how he was going to get himself uh, G'd back up for the for the Crucible. So look, John Higgins, great player, uh, and I really wish him well in this tournament. I'm um, just having a look here. He plays Tepchaya on new, the Thai player in the first round, possibly Luca Brussel, the Belgian, in the second round. But for me, he, he's not going to win it this year. So John is gone. Like, yeah, you mentioned a form of the Crucible, and that is massive. Um, and this is where we get, lose some of the other big names. Stuart Bing- Bingham is a, is a Crucible veteran. Um, and, and yet, I just don't think Bingham can get over the line again. He won in 2015. Um, but I would be surprised if he went all the way this time. Sean Murphy, uh, Ireland's Sean Murphy, I think we're claiming him. We spoke well, we, I, I, I was in Super Value recently, and for the <laughs> second time I saw Sean Murphy in Super Value. And if we go to the same Super Value, well, surely we should be claiming him. <laughs> it was that in Dundrum. He lives around that area, doesn't he? I didn't want to say. Like, it's, these are uh, GDPR, <laughs> Shane. You've like screwed both of us there. Well, I think he said it, he said it on air to us where he, where he shops on, on, in Rathfarnham at one stage. Or, and uh, he... He's one of those people that everyone seems to see about. He's he's big into his supercars. He goes to all these car shows around Dublin. Um, married, of course, to a to a Dublin woman. His kids are Dublin GEA fans. He's Irish, um, and I think three of his four grandparents, if I'm not mistaken, were Irish as well. So, of course, we can claim him. So I do wish Sean all the best. Finalist last year, that was his fourth final, um, but he's he's lost now his last three finals since he became that uh, first ever qualifier or first qualifier since Terry Griffiths to win in 05. Sean, I'm sorry, but you're gone. I do wish you all the best. Ding Zhan Wei, um, Chinese player who at the Crucible, Nathan, just is like a, a deer in headlights sometimes. Again, that sounds harsh because he's he's been all the way to a decider. Um, but in qualifying, he looked all but gone against David Lilly. 7-4 down, then he won six frames in a row. He's in the Crucible for a 16th consecutive year. So, I mean, Ding, if you're going to win it, Get it done now, but um, for the reasons I've stated above and, and the fact that he just can't seem to get over the line of the Crucible, he's gone. Steve Maguire, he's into the Crucible. The Scotsman for the 19th consecutive time. A dogfight for him against Zhou, the Chinese player in qualifying. Uh, he's got to the semifinals twice, uh, but if you haven't got beyond the semifinals before now, I mean, you're gone. So, and by the way, this sounds terribly harsh because I'm a, I'm a terrible snooker player myself. Um, Irish interest is, is focused, uh, Nathan, on Mark Allen. Got to the semi-finals once before in 2009. We'd love to see him do it. I'm just trying to look at the uh, the draw here. He plays Scott Donaldson uh, from Scotland in the opening round, but it's what awaits in the second round for him. The winner of Ronnie O'Sullivan and David Gilbert. So uh, a massive clash against Ronnie. Sorry, Mark, you're gone. Uh, Anthony McGill and Kyron Wilson, two uh, Crucible four men. Remarkable semi-final between the two of them a couple of years ago in 2020. Kyron got to the semi-finals again last year. Um, McGill got to the quarterfinals, knocked out Ronnie in the process. But uh, both definite dark horses, and please remember I said that, uh, but they are also both gone now. Come on, so we're, we're get getting down there, the list. Shane. We need the final decision. Who is it? Okay. All these um, meaningful metrics, where does it lead to? Yeah, okay. We're, we're, I, we think we're down to about five names now. The six, oh, the other, the other name. I know, we're nearly there, Nathan. Don't worry, don't worry. And I know people on Tender Hooks, one of the comments on your, on your Masters video, by the way, I, I was looking at it last night. Uh, looking good, Nathan. Cameron Smith is bang there. Hope I don't curse it. Please do data to predict World Championship snooker. So even even in the midst of uh, the Masters ongoing, people wanted the real sport. They wanted snooker. So uh, the people are enjoying this, I think, Nathan. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hurry on now and shut up. But um, <laughs> uh, Ashley Hugel... Ashley Hugel's a There's only 32 players in this. <laughs> we're nearly there. We're almost there, folks. Turn your radios up. We're about to get to the finale here, the crescendo of the World Snooker Championship predictions with Whoop. <laughs> I mean... Ashley Hugel is a, is a, is someone I would have mentioned as a qualifier. You did. Um, who, and you said that qualifiers aren't going to win. No, they're not going to win. He's gone. I'm sorry, Ashley Hugel, but uh, he's only gone because he's drawn uh, Neil Robertson in the first round. Ronnie O'Sullivan, too much pressure to win number seven and draw level with Stephen Hendry. So I just don't think he's 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 certainly 
on target to, for, a, for a semi-final against Neil Robertson. That's the way the draw has gone, Nathan. But I'm ruling Ronnie O'Sullivan out for that reason. Mark Williams, uh, he has Mar- Barry Hawkins and Mark Selby in the second and uh, quarterfinals if he, if he makes it that far. I, I love Mark Williams, but he's, he's out for that reason. Tough draw. Mark Selby, defending champion. It's quite tough to defend your title. He's spoken as well about some some issues off the the uh, table, mental health issues that he's had in recent months as well. And, and look, his form hasn't been excellent, so I'm going to rule Mark Selby out because of his form. Barry Hawkins, final. It was in a final before, but not since 2012. Uh, loves it, loves the Crucible. But uh, Nathan, we're down to one. And um, for all the people listening, I think Neil Robertson is going to lift the World Snooker Championship trophy in a couple of weeks. I mean, he's only won it once in 2010, which is which is a shame because he probably should have won more. Um, and and look, I, I ruled out a number of players for being from outside the UK and Ireland, but he's won at the Crucible before. He's in extraordinary form. He's won the English Open in November. This year alone, he's bagged the Masters, the Players' Championship, the Tour Championship, which is the most recent tournament. Doesn't mind the crowd. He's the perfect age at 40 as well. Uh, I just think a Ronnie Robertson. And that's the other thing we didn't mention. Age is a metric here, Nathan, but players the upper limit of, of ages doesn't matter anymore like Ronnie's 46 Mark Williams is 46 I think as well or he's 47 John Higgins is 46 uh, age is only a number when it comes to snooker 40 is very young Shane it, it, well I know you, you, you're you mad to, to believe that but um, it certainly is young in terms of snooker and, and Ray Reardon was the oldest player to win it in 1978 he was 45 certainly wouldn't rule out, rule out any of those players who are older than Reardon breaking that record this year but I just think with the form he's in it, Nathan, um, it could be a Ronnie Robertson semi-final. Whoever comes through that semi-final is going to win the World Championship. And I think it's going to be Neil Robertson, the thunder from down under. Whew, we got there. We got there. Shane, get back to the table. I like the way you <laughs> kept the cue with you for the entire piece. I did. Uh, and uh, go get onto eBay. Get your £24 for that signed Ronnie O'Sullivan snooker ball. Uh, well done. We have got there eventually. So Neil Robertson is the man that the metric suggests will win the World Snooker Championship. Shane, thank you as always. Even lads, thanks a million, Nathan. Meaningful metrics on OTB Sports in partnership with Whoop, the personalised digital fitness and health coach that helps you unlock your inner potential. See whoop.com for more. Meaningful metrics on Off the Ball. In partnership with Whoop, the personalised digital fitness and health coach that helps you unlock your inner potential. See whoop.com for more.